Hello everyone, and I'd now like to share a story, an experience if you like, what was told to me just a few months ago, and I don't think, apart from his close family or maybe a few close friends, the witness has really talked about what he saw and experienced in a lot of years. I've spoke at length with the witness, Jason, and we spoke about the things primarily that occurred and happened during childhood. So they've troubled him these past 40 years and his life-changing encounter happened in the late 1970s. He believes he was between nine and 11 years old. And like I've always said about my own experiences, a child does not keep a diary. And that's as close as he can get to a date for what happened during that period. And let's just dive into it. At the time he was living in Sussex with his parents in East Grinstead, West Sussex to be exact, told me that the house they lived in was a detached three-story townhouse. So quite a big house, I would imagine. He told me that he's now in his mid-50s and he's moved homes many, many times in his life. But this particular house is the one that he most often returns to in his dreams and in his thoughts when he's thinking about the past. And mainly because of what happened on one particular night and it had such a lasting impact on Jason's life, even to this present day, that he can never forget it. And it, obviously it's going to continue throughout his life because as you guys know, as I know myself, these things that do impact on our lives, these things that kind of etch themselves into our minds and get under our skin, never ever leave. So Jason says he vividly remembers the night that it happened. And on this night he's in bed. He's sure he wasn't asleep, but he remembers that it was dark. That's something else that has always puzzled him. How he was able to see exactly what he saw in a dark room. Something that's puzzled me as well and something that I would imagine puzzles many, many people who see and experience these things in complete darkness. Okay, he cannot be sure if he was trying to get to sleep or if something had woken him up. But... He's awake. He is 100% sure that he was awake during the encounter. So you can see where we're going with this, people. It, oh, let's just lead us in. Let's just walk into this kind of sinister story. Uh, it's so strange to me how these three to six second encounters with the unknown, with something truly unknown, remain in a person's life forever. Now, Jason cannot imagine he was doing anything more than laying in his bed with his own thoughts. In truth, and obviously he can't remember now, thoughts of nothing of any importance that he can remember. Well, that was not until he turned his head to the side and was shocked, absolutely shocked and terrified to see a face looking back at him from the other side of the bed. Shock combined with horror instantly filled this young boy's mind. Nine to eleven years old, remember. These things, this thing, it's not supposed to exist. But it did. Something truly horrifying was staring back at him, staring into his eyes. And Jason says even now, over 40 years later, the image of what he saw, he says it still sends shivers down his spine. He went on to describe what he saw and he said it had a domed head covered in wrinkled leathery blue skin that almost had an elephant like texture and he said its head was big and it was no more than 10 to 12 inches from his face imagine he cannot be sure if it was stood up or crouched at the side of the bed because he only saw the head he still asks himself how he was able to see so much detail in the darkness, in the dead of night. And that, to be honest with you people, is a question that I ask myself constantly when I saw the beings that I've called 
the night people. So he's right. It should have been impossible. But many people speak about this, you know, with the same bewilderment, with the same thoughts of impossible. As he's looking at this hideous thing, he also observed that it had no visible ears. But for Jason, the most frightening thing of all was looking into its four bloodshot eyes. You heard that right. Four eyes. He said they were all glistening and wet and staring back at him. I can't imagine it. He told me that he was absolutely terrified by this apparition. And he described it as an apparition. So, you know, I don't suppose we'll ever know, but was it actually there? Was this some kind of ghost type manifestation? It's hard to say. Was this something created in his own mind? Questions I've asked myself about my own experiences and my answer to my own would be no. And I would think the same answer would be to Jason's because how can we create things that we've never seen before? It, Jason told me that after fixing his eyes on this thing, this four-eyed creature with blue skin, his face, his own face, instantly contorted into a silent scream. Then it became even more terrifying because at that moment, in seemingly response to Jason's fear, this blue creature, this goblin, demon, whatever you want to call it, began to smile back at him. But this smile was different. It was a huge, sinister smile. And then he went on to describe, he said, a smile that split its whole head from one ear to the other ear, all the way round, almost as though half of its face has opened up. So the entire encounter revolved around seeing the face of a demon, or whatever word you want to use to call this thing. And he remembers its face in vivid, vivid detail. He also noted that it didn't have any lips. It just had a, a thin slit or line where its mouth should have been. Just at this slit in this horribly wrinkly face. But there was more. He told me that as its mouth opened, this thing had hundreds and hundreds of what looked like tiny, white, sharp teeth. When I get an image in my head of what he's describing, I don't get an image of a snake's head, but I do get an image of all those backward-facing, sharp teeth that you see in a, on a snake. I don't know. Obviously, I didn't experience it. Jason did. However, so many things have sort of bothered him about that night in the 40 years that have passed. He absolutely knows with certainty that he shouldn't have been able to see anything in the darkness, but he could. He also knows that he could not have imagined what he saw. Uh, that's because his young mind had never, ever been exposed to anything so terrifying, but he saw it. I think I've just echoed that myself with my own experiences, and I should imagine that sort of flies across the board to all other lifelong experiences from childhood to present day. How could he have known? How could anyone have seen such things at such a young age? So we, we've established that it's the middle of the night. He should not have been able to see the colour, but it was blue. At this point, Jason said he became so frightened that he clenched his eyes shut and desperately tried to tell himself that he'd imagined it. Jason knew that even at such a young age, he couldn't have imagined something so vivid and to see it as a solid object in the room with him, inches from his face. All of these years later, nothing's changed in that respect. So, with his eyes closed tight and in true childlike form, Jason then began to desperately try and imagine creatures that he thought would protect him from this hideous goblin, demon, monster that lingered inches from his face. He thought of animals such as lions, eagles, dragons. Sheer desperation on his part. And I'll jump back to childhood. And I used to line the action man figures up at the side of the bed. 
and toy soldiers thinking that they would protect me. And this is no different. It's just a different set of, a different thought process and a different set of items to sort of form this barrier, this protection. But these were just thoughts that Jason formed in his mind in sheer desperation. A bit like cartoons or doodles. They weren't living, breathing, three-dimensional beasts. Not like what had just stared into his eyes moments before he closed them. It's four piggy, bloodshot eyes mocking his fear. When Jason finally dared to open his eyes, he was alone. The room was in complete darkness. Incredibly, after seeing the blue creature, Jason had a sort of amnesia and forgot all about it. It was a memory that never ever resurfaced until many years later. Once again, another element that we hear about over and over again in these types of encounters. So, that short but terrifying encounter has to some degree shaped Jason's life. And since that night, so he tells me, he's researched UFO law demonology and everything in between how can three to six seconds have such a lasting impact on a person's life well if you're listening to this looking for answers to your own terrifying encounter you'll know that three to six seconds can last a lifetime thank you